Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this week's sabbatical live video. Uh, we've got a really special one today and a real treat for you. We're coming live from Brisbane at the Royal Queensland Yacht Squadron and on board a Sea Wind 1600 um, 52 footer called Double J. And uh, if you've been Watching some of the uh, YouTube channels recently, you will have noticed uh, that the Ruby Rose Sailing Channel uh, went to a really cool public voting system around 20 catamarans that they reviewed. And the Sea Wind 1600, after 5,000 votes, was voted number one amongst all of the uh, boats that they've reviewed amongst some big brands out there, which is uh, a great credit to the company and um, and uh, everyone involved with the boat. Um, and, and interestingly enough, the Sea Wind 1260 was voted fifth in uh, the 20 boats that they reviewed. So well done, Sea Wind. Um, but we thought we'd take this opportunity to take you through a boat that we do have locally here in Brisbane and uh, give people an opportunity to have a look through and ask questions as we go and where we can, we'll answer those. And if we can't, we'll do our best answer at, at, uh, towards the end and provide some show notes. So, um, so please ask questions where we can and we will do our best to answer them as we walk through the boat. Now, I uh, want to give a big thank you to John and uh, Anita for allowing us to uh, show Double J here today. It uh, looks like a pretty nice day up there in Brisbane, maybe a little shower. And Sally, uh, our trusty assistant on the, on the boat, walking us through while I'm sitting here in cold Sydney. So uh, there you go. We're using all facets of our technology today. Um, so <clears throat> we'll get things underway. Now, uh, Sally, if you wanted to walk up for us to the helm positions, we're gonna take a look at the helm here. I'm going to put you on to, uh, there we go. So the, the 1600 has got a really unique helm position compared to most 52 footers out there. First of all, there are twin helms. And so if you want to pan over to the starboard side, you can see there's a secondary helm there. And unlike a lot of the photos and videos you may have seen in this setup, you can see this, the uh, clears that are actually in place. Um, this had a... Uh, Thing come through, can't see the boat, can only see you. All right, stand by. Uh, all right. Okay, now we're looking there now. Excellent, all right, we're back. We're back in focus. Uh, don't want to be looking at me through this. So we're back on the boat. All right. So as I was saying, the 1600 has got a very unique and a very cool helm position, I believe, in that you've got twin helms for a start, so you can get to either side of the boat. And as you can see here, which, as I was saying, uh, unlike a lot of the photos and videos you may have seen where everything's opened up, which is great because you've got lots of visibility and lots of ventilation in this environment, uh, they've closed it in with the clears to close in the boat. So you can see that at the helm position, uh, you can be completely enclosed. But, and if you just look up a little bit there, so with the camera, you can see you've got the shade of the uh, hard top roof over the top. And with those clears removed, you can step slightly outboard and look up to your sails and look straight through onto the boat. So obviously we've got lots of clears here in the moment. So this is sort of a, a wet weather scenario, but take those up and you've got really good visibility. And if we just step outside there a little bit to outboard for a sail behind and look up to the rig, you can see, yeah, you just duck your head outside of that uh, hard top and you can see onto your sails and straight down the boat. Now, at the helm position, <clears throat> on the port helm, which is the primary helm, you have the electronic throttle controls and there's a secondary set on the starboard side. So you can maneuver and park the boat from either side when you're coming into dock. There's also a little push button controller there uh, just to the right of the throttle controls. That controls the main winch to trim sheets. So you can have your jib sheet on there uh, and other lines that may need adjusting. 
but typically your jib sheet or maybe a, a, a Genoa sheet or something that you're running through there to give it some sail trim as you go. Uh, and obviously you've got all of your electronics. We have a, a BNG kit, chart plotter, uh, autopilot, depth, tri data, and then down to your, uh, to your left, there's the Yanmar controls to kick over the boat and see your throttles as we go. Uh, and it's a composite uh, wheel on both sides. So it's nice and light and, and easy to steer with, very comfortable position, a big double bucket seat. If you just take a step back, Sal, great. You can see quite a large bucket seat there that two people can comfortably sit and, uh, and enjoy the view. Excellent. So while we're here, we might take a little turn around and have a look at some of the sailing systems from the cockpit. And the 1600 is quite unique. Uh, and actually, before we get there, you see a cool shade cloth uh, or curtain there that they've put in place, which can be rolled up and looks like some additional uh, shades out on either side. So that's uh, quite a neat addition to close the whole back in. And you've got a couple of seats there either side of the primary winch but the primary winch does a lot of work so on here you've got jib uh, sheeting you have uh, a whole bunch of miscellaneous lines from outhaul uh, various halyards the main halyard uh, reefing systems but very neatly brought back to that winch which is obviously an electric winch and those lines run under the boat through uh, channels that you still can get access through through removing some panels, but keeps them out of, uh, out of the sun and um, out of the way uh, and neatly collects into the, uh, the rope lockers either side of the winch underneath those seats. You can see them being fed in there underneath the cushions. Um, yeah, if you lift it up, there you go. So there's some really cool deep uh, rope lockers there that uh, you can stow those away in when not being used. So it means a lot of the heavy work is done inboard um, and then your, your sheeting is done from the helm for your jib trim and so on. The main sheet's a little bit different in that if we just go to the right slightly, yeah, you can see there's two winches and the, that's the main sheet there, one of the main sheets that connects from either side onto the boom. And so the main sheet, or well, the double main sheet, doubles as a traveler. Now, uh, they're excellent, excellent view there. So you can see it going back to either side and one winch on either side. Now, what that does, it gives you an incredible amount of control over not only which side of the boat that the boom is sitting on, but also the height that you want to put into the boom. So if you want to add a little bit of twist or a little bit of belly into the main, you can just ease perhaps your leeward side, let it up a little, add a bit of twist, or sheet down to flatten out the leech. So a really cool way to pinpoint exactly where you want the boom and the amount of uh, power in the mainsail. And while we're out here, you can see a couple of uh, carbon fiber uh, dinghy davits holding the dinghy. And uh, this boat's a commercial vessel, so it's got quite a large uh, life raft, larger than normal, mounted above the dinghy. Uh, but that's not a bad spot for it in any case. So uh, <clears throat> the so that's the the main uh, controls there. Uh, we do have an additional line. In fact, if you just zoom up to the uh, end of the boom there, so look at the I see the preventer. You can't quite see it. There is a preventer line that comes out of the boom that you can attach to pad eyes sitting on the deck and uh, that allows you to again uh, pinpoint the control of the boom and hold it in position particularly for deep downwind legs. So while we're talking about I guess the sailing systems in hand with that are the product of the um, dagger boards and retractable runners. And now because the boat is performance oriented these allow you to get quite a bit of additional performance uh, to windward and equally when you're off the breeze you can pull the dagger boards up but what we're looking at here is the rudder case and a retractable rudder so that can 
completely lift up out of the system. Sally's just lost vision. So I'm gonna to go to a quick slide we've got on this. So as you can see, the dagger board and the rudder lift up very high out of the way. And the neat thing with that is your draft uh, reduces considerably uh, when you've got them in full depth mode, uh, you're down to 2.6 meters. But when you're in minimum draft mode, you weigh down to 0.54 of a meter. So this allows you to get into really tight, pokey little uh, bays and, and creeks and whatnot, and even let the boat rest uh, on the bottom of the hull. And you'll notice in this diagram, you can see that the sail drive is located further up the rocker of the hull, so it doesn't touch the bottom if you do sit the boat on the sand. So it does give you a lot of flexibility around shallow locations and obviously gives you the performance that uh, foils with your daggerboard and rudder can provide. So I think we've got sail back here now. So that's the rudder casing that just sits under a neat little uh, lid there that drops back in place and they just slide up and down in a very, um, very simple uh, arrangement there. Highly engineered arrangement, but uh, simple once it's working as it should. So, um, so nicely uh, set up there. What we might do is turn around and sell and have a quick look at the daggerboard arrangement which again is quite unique on this boat. And as we go up through here, you'll notice the decks are really flat. This boat has got the uh, flexi teak arrangement in place, uh, which is an option on these boats. And just uh, there at the chain, uh, the inner side stay, there we go. There's a, a little hatch fingers in there, open it up, bingo. Okay, so we can see the top of the dagger board as it sits in its up position. So it's retracted all the way up out of the water there at the moment. And you'll see there are two lines, one pulling it up and one pulling it down uh, that go through a bearing through the middle of the board. So they can be controlled back at the helm, just behind the, uh, the helm position to whatever depth you need them to be in. Now, the beauty of this, of course, is that the daggerboard isn't uh, sitting up high out of, the, uh, out of the boat, creating additional windage or another hazard to uh, walk around. It's completely enclosed inside the boat. And interestingly, inside the boat, it, they aren't actually very noticeable either because they're built into the furniture on the inboard side of the hull as opposed to the outboard side of the hull. So. It is quite a neat um, arrangement there. So while we're on the deck, uh, we might walk forward, Sal, and while you're doing that, we'll just run through uh, some of the sails here. And I'll again, come back to this diagram we have. So <clears throat> there's, uh, it's an aluminium fixed rig and aluminium boom. You can have the option for additional uh, uh, booms made out of carbon fiber. Uh, the mainsail is a 100 square meter mainsail and a 44.5 meter square self-tacking jib. And we might even have some footage there now of Sal. If you want to uh, point us down onto the deck where the self-tacker is, so we've got some hatches open there and you can see the lines coming back from the jib sheet. Uh, yeah, back to a self-tacking arrangement. And we've got some halyards there at the, the base of the mast and some steps up onto the deck. The boat also has an optional screecher, 92.5 square meter screecher, or a whopping 220 square meter spinnaker, it's a big asymmetrical kite. Now those run from a bowsprit, and I don't know if you can walk out there, Sal, you can actually see it from here, so it's not too bad. There's a retractable carbon bowsprit, excellent, that um, pushes out further from the compression beam there, and that allows you to run those uh, either spinnaker or screecher from that position further out. But of course, if you're in a marina, 
situation and you need to reduce uh, overall length, you just retract that back in by simply removing a little bolt. Now, there have been a few little modifications on this uh, compression beam here, which also does allow for a stay sail uh, if, if need be later on. And I'll just quickly show you um, a couple of photos I've got of the latest boat that we saw over in Miami. In fact, here are some optional cushions that can sit up on the forward uh, trampolines. And here we've got the new arrangement for the compression bream or the O-Rong they call it. So there's the uh, the bridle, the anchor bridle's actually got a, a dedicated position now and sits in the, a little uh, uh, knuckle there holding it in position. Uh, and that can also take the stay sail if you want to run a, a storm sail or stay sail off this pinpoint here. You got a neat little locker there to uh, get access to and from the anchor, which is uh, set slightly further off now. So that's some of the, the new arrangements on uh, current boats coming through. But as you can see, the trampolines or the nets are very large on the Seawind 1600. They're keeping the weight further aft or centralised on the boat, and it means less pounding you know, when sailing to windward. And uh, a little bit more performance, got a very high aspect uh, hull design and, and quite a narrow uh, beam in the in the water at the time when you're sailing so it's a very efficient hull a couple of bow seats up forward there to uh watch everything and uh we've got some of the lockers forward there open cell if you want to walk us down to some of those lockers so in these lockers you've got a couple of things going on you've got uh uh, access to some of the fuel and water. There's actually a generator located in there for running air conditioning and other appliances on the boat. And it looks like a, uh, a spinnaker bags in there along with fenders and so on. So there's two big lockers are quite deep for additional storage. The fuel on the boat is 750 litres of water in total, uh, of fuel, sorry, 750 litres of fuel and 600 litres of water. So quite good capacity on both. And this sail locker or storage locker is repeated on both sides. You can see the uh, there's some tanks in there behind it, the water and the diesel tanks. So it's keeping the weight quite centralised and uh, preventing it from, uh, I guess, producing that pendulum effect or pitch polling, not pitch polling, uh, hobby horsing when, uh, when there's a bit of uh, chop about so the big philosophy on these boats is keeping the weight centralised and uh, distributed as low as possible. In fact, if you pan up a little bit for us again, Sal, that has got a lot to do with the way the boom is designed. And you're gonna have to take your finger off the lens, Sal. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but the boom is considerably lower than most uh, production cats of around this size, apart from similar designs. So the point of that is keeping your center of effort low and keeping the weight low and really reducing that hobby horsing effect and, and um, the, the pendulum effect that can happen when all the weight gets pushed up higher. So if you've got, you know, big bridge deck helms and, uh, and, and hard tops further up and then the boom gets pushed up and which means the center of effort's got to go up and often they have bigger sails to compensate for the additional weight. Uh, it's all getting pushed further and further up. Whereas this, it's quite low, it's quite manageable. You can see you can easily walk up there onto the hard top, pack away the sails, walk up onto the, uh, the cockpit hard top as well and, uh, and tidy up sails as you go, so a really nice location. Okay. So I've just missed a couple of questions here. Charles asks, uh, is the bowsprit fully retracted? So I'm not sure if you can pan around again for me, Sal, to the bowsprit, uh, but that is the retract, that is the, uh, in its, full length position there. So it's not a very big bowsprit and it does retract fully back in to where the white fiberglass 
location is there. So that's it, that's out of position there. We'll come back to some of the other uh, questions there around heating and cooling and so on. Um, and yes, to answer Peter's question, this is a 52 footer, correct. So we've talked about forward deck. Um, why don't we walk down there a little bit and uh, back towards the cockpit and maybe we can just see some of the solar panels on the way past, Sal, if you can show us on top of the coach roof. Excellent. Okay, so we've got four 200 watt solar panels. So these are the glass panels. In fact, I think they're 220 watts now. They give you, you know, around 880 watts of panels up on that hard, hard top roof. Now, that can be added to by removing the, the glass panels and going to a, a soft uh, walk-on panel. Those panels are not as efficient, but you can get much bigger surface area by using the entire space up there. And also uh, you can walk on them if need be. Uh, so you can just get more overall wattage out of the soft walk on panels. While we're in this position, uh, you can see there's quite a deep channel that runs around the outer edge of that uh, of that hard top. So that does a couple of things. It um, gives you a good handhold when you're walking past, but also channels water into a couple of drainage points. So if you if you do need to capture fresh water uh, from rainfall, you've got that available to you which we don't see often on boats these days. Uh, you know, obviously we've got water makers, but it's nice to have that backup. So yeah, we've got 800 watts of solar panel. Um, as far as electrics go, this vessel, and it's quite common to have a two and a half thousand watt inverter and 100 amp battery charger. Uh, the standard package has got two, uh, 200, well, three by 200 amp hour AGM or sealed glass mat batteries. And then there's an additional starter battery, uh, but there are options to move to lithium batteries. And we are seeing that more and more often now. And it's, a, um, it's not a bad consideration for a boat of this size and value and keeping the weight out of the boat, but also giving you more flexibility around uh, how power is drawn from the boat in that you can use a good chunk of the battery capacity. And uh, they're a lot more robust to power spikes from uh, air conditioners and so on. So they're now able to actually run air conditioning from the batteries alone, providing you got the charge to, to push back into the, um, the package. Okay, so that is the deck. Um, we might have a, not sure if we've got access to the engine rooms there at all cell, but maybe you can take us in that vicinity at least. Couple of big hatches you can see there that uh, give you access into the engine rooms. I do have a slide here showing a photo of this anyway, which I'll go to real quick while you're opening that up. Okay, so inside the engine rooms, you can see they are vast, there's quite a bit of space down there and they do give you uh, room to have additional accessories. So on this uh, particular image, I think this is the starboard side we're looking at. Um, in fact, it might be the port side. Mm, port side we're looking at here. So we have the uh, Rainman water maker installed on the boat with the, uh, the membranes uh, positioned outboard. And uh, on the starboard side, there's uh, a space for other things such as generators and so on. So you can see cells just open up in there and uh, you've got a step mounted on top of the engine that allows you to easily jump down into the, uh, the space for servicing. Uh, the standard motors are 57 horsepower Yanmar motors. Uh, I think this boat has got the upgraded 80 horsepower diesel motors coupled with a sail drive and a folding three blade gory propeller. And you can see quite uh, substantial steering arrangements there as well. Okay, come back to Sally here. All right, so we're in the engine room. 
looking down here on the port side. So this is uh, the same as we had on the image. Uh, so you can see there's plenty of room in there that's looking straight down on top of the sail drive. And I'll do a full, there we go, full loop. Well, okay. So, uh, plenty of room in there for servicing. Very clean. You can see there's um, <clears throat> some sound uh, protection there into the uh, the cabins. Okay. So the hot water system is a heat exchange of the diesel motor, and uh, that gives you know hot water overnight. So you, you never tend to run out of hot water if you've got the motors running at all during the day. And of course, with the water maker on board, uh, you can reduce your your stored fresh water on the boat, of course, down as well. So um, there you have the engine rooms. So what we might do is move towards the inside of the boat now, Sal. If you want to... And before we go inside, um, I have a quick look at the cockpit here. So you've got an L-shaped seat. They've got some uh, some eskies there by the looks of it, or chillers and a uh, little uh, fridge they, they've got. Now, to the left, uh, there's, a, there's a bar fridge there for drinks and so on. And the windows, you can slide open from the galley to that L-shaped uh, saloon or cockpit lounge, I should say. Now, the cockpit table there, that has been modified in recent times. And uh, see if I can bring up an image uh, of the current arrangement. So there's a few little tweaks that have been made. So the new one is slightly larger and you can see there's some hinges and you can fold that back to more of a coffee table. So it's a, a new arrangement. But this is a really great setup here because you, you've got a nice comfortable lounging position when the windows are right open, uh, you've got access into the galley so food can be passed out, you can communicate easily. You've got good visibility when you're sitting down through all the windows forward. And when you stand up, you can see over the top of the coach roof. Okay, so like we walk inside. All right, so it's a step down into the saloon. And the neat thing about that is, as I just mentioned, you can see over the top of the coach roof when you're in the cockpit, but now you're down inside, you've got good visibility through the big windows. And you see on the forward windows, there's two sizable hatches there to allow ventilation through the primary windows, plus a couple of smaller portholes. So you've got nice natural ventilation coming through. And I think just above you there, Cell, or slightly, yeah, there's a couple of hatches that can be opened up in the roof as well to allow airflow. And you'll notice on that hatch there, they've got the inset screen in position with a uh, the ocean air screen, so they can be blocked out either, in the other direction as well. And then in the middle here, that's actually a skylight uh, that just gives you visibility straight onto the onto the boom and onto the rig and onto the sails if you are sailing. So from inboard the boat, I'm sure if you can open that up, sail. Test you out. Yeah, okay, well, it's gone onto the... Uh, the inset screen mode there, but you can see you've got visibility. Now at the moment, you've got visibility directly underneath the boom, but when you're sailing, that's slightly offset. So from inside the boat, if it's bad weather and stormy, you can see under your sails to just keep an eye on what's happening. So why don't we have a look at the galley? Okay, so you can see this is a big galley up. This is, this is not a typical galley up. Uh, you've got a lot of bench space here. And as far as refrigeration goes, you've got a 160 litre fridge and there's a 110 litre freezer also. Uh, there's a obviously an oven and a gas stove that can also be electric if you're preferred to go that way. Uh, and then you've got storage 
with cupboards and shelving underneath, obviously. And, in, and as I was mentioning, those windows can fully slide open. So you've got not only ventilation, but communication and visibility directly to any guests or crew sitting out in the cockpit. We've also got some 12 volt fans located around the boat as well, if you're not using the air conditioning. This boat is fitted with air conditioning, cruise air system with ducting into the saloon and into each cabin. And those cabins have got individual controls, which we'll have a look at in a minute. If we just uh, have a look to the left there, Sal. See, there's a forward facing nav station, quite a sizable nav station there. That you can see through the main windows and actually from there you can a bit difficult for sale to do, but you can look straight up and again, see your sails from the, uh, from the nav station, uh, which is quite a nice position. So, and you can run additional repeaters for chart potters and all your instrumentations back, back to that uh, location. Yeah, so you can see under your, your boom, there you go. See up your rig, see what's happening, the sails. So again, your autopilot, your sails are set, Flying up the coast, you can do a quick check to see how things are moving and um, keep watch from that position if you're doing any planning. Now, if we just have a look at the uh, saloon seating there. Excellent, so you got a really comfortable, very luxurious uh, interior finish and a, uh, a, a dinette arrangement so that uh, can drop down either a coffee table or convert into another bed upstairs. And then, yeah, further to the left, you can see the TV mounted into the uh, into the furniture there, and there's some storage behind that and forward of that as well. So there is a little step. Uh, Peter has asked, "Is there a step from the cockpit to the saloon?" Yeah, there is. So if we just turn around, uh, facing the cockpit there, you can see there's a couple of steps up into the uh, into the cockpit, and this is a really didn't uh, realize how neat it was at first, but that step just gives you so much more visibility when you're out in the cockpit over the over the top of the coach roof and over the saloon. So I think it's uh, it's actually a really neat feature. So why don't we go into the cabin cell? Uh, if you want to take us down to the master cabin on the starboard side. Okay, so watch your step, a couple of steps down below. Okay. So here we have the master cabin. And you can see it's, it's nicely lit, but uh, there are a couple of fans above each pillow there essentially to give you 12, uh, 12 volt fans airflow. And there's uh, LED lights throughout the boat for uh, reading and, and just general lighting, which aren't on at the moment. And then you've got storage just to the right with a little vanity inboard of that. So a nice vanity station there, a little seat. And then you've got hanging locker storage that's it, just to, uh, to your right there. So quite large hanging lockers. And then forward of that, you have access to your, uh, so this is really the owner's stateroom, I guess. So have your access up to the bathroom. So you've got your head, electric toilet. On this boat, we've uh, recently retrofitted a, a fresh water and salt water flush arrangement, which is neat. And you can see slightly to the left, we've got a washing machine installed. Yeah. And then your vanity. So quite a lot of headroom through here as well. I mean, I'm six foot four. I walk through here very comfortably. You got a big standing shower space and you got uh, portholes coming through a hatch directly above. Yeah. And, uh, and in fact, these portholes to the outboard side, you can see one just coming to view there. These have all been opened up considerably uh, throughout the entire side of the boat in terms of larger windows on the newer version. So 
just bring up, I don't have a great photo of this, but this is again a shot of a boat we had at the Miami Boat Show. And you can see we've gone from just having the portholes to having large window frame there as well, just to allow more light flow through and um, give a big, uh, bigger window profile. All right, so that is the uh, the master's head and vanity. And if we just do a U-turn there again, just have one last look at the, uh, the master cabin, yeah. So it's, it's quite a large bed. It's not quite a full island bed, but it's pretty darn close. You've got access obviously to either side. It's quite low set. It's not super high that you've got to climb up into it. You can't sit down onto it. Uh, so for a performance boat to get a bed like that, it's pretty rare to be honest. Um, so that is, uh, I just think a really impressive master cabin for you know a, a dagger ball performance boat we've had a question here from charles which i think is a really good uh question the dagger board inside view so sell if we do a 180 here and just go midships so in this furniture here is roughly where the dagger board is housed so you can see how discreetly that is uh kept from view so you wouldn't even notice you've got a dagger board on the boat and you know, it's quite a wide space to walk through here still. So you're not um, having to navigate your way through. And there is a, a door there that slides closed to provide some uh, privacy as well. So yeah, it's just designed into the furniture there. So what we might do is uh, walk back upstairs and have a look at the guest cabin. So we've got some uh, cabinetry there, some general storage underneath the TV. And so on the port side, you've got two guest cabins. So this is the three cabin owner's version. You can get a four cabin, which is, I guess, more suited for larger families or chartering, but this is the typical configuration. Okay, so let's have a look back in the, the main uh, guest cabin here. Now you'll notice there's two single bunks so you've got the option to either see, leave that as two singles or there isn't a fill-in section to convert that to a large queen bed. So you've got a bit of flexibility there. If you've got uh, mates going on a fishing trip like John often does, uh, they don't wanna share a bed. Well, you, you, you run the splitter down the middle and you've got a couple of good single beds or you've got teenage kids or friends or whatever, it's quite, it's quite neat to have that option there. But equally, uh, it can be converted back to a proper bed for, uh, for couples and so on. And uh, again, we've got a couple of fans up there above and there is a, a, a little hatch there above there too, just to get the air moving through the boat. Yep. And then two porthole windows that can be opened up for natural airflow outboard. And as again, as I mentioned, uh, there's a bigger glass panel joining those two on uh, on future boats, rather than purely the porthole. So that's a little bit a little bit different now on the on the new designs. But you see, there's really beautiful LED strip lighting that goes through uh, all the headliners and keeps that mood lighting uh, subtle, but um, gives you still good light through the boat. All right, so we turn to the left there, you'll see again some more storage, uh, hanging locker storage. See another, actually before we move their cell, straight forward, there's another porthole into the cockpit. So again, you've got lots of hatches giving you airflow through, but uh, let's not forget that the boat does have air conditioning and I believe there's some ducting there just above Kermit the Frog's head uh, to allow airflow into the boat, into the cabins. And there's a little panel there somewhere to control individually for each room, the uh, temperature and strength of the fans may not be obvious there. Okay, so let's turn slightly to the left if we could sell, so thank you. And we've got some storage lockers and again, a, 
a decent uh, hanging wardrobe there for those uh, living on the boat, families and so on. So, and really nice furniture and nice choice of uh, timbers used throughout the, the 1600, particularly with the light combination. I don't think the phone's doing it justice here, but uh, in real life, it's a very pretty arrangement. All the walls have got uh, vinyl headliners, as does the ceiling. So you've got really nice quality finishes throughout the whole boat. Yeah, let's go forward. So in the right here, we have uh, the midships bathroom. So again, we have uh, a standing shower, quite a good space. Bit of visibility under the, uh, the bridge deck there. And then there's an electric toilet just to the right. There we go. So that's like the, the guest uh, amenities, bathroom and so on. And then forward of that, again, we have the uh, the smaller guest cabin. So this is more of a three quarter uh, queen, I guess, or double bed. Uh, but again, really beautifully done in terms of uh, lighting in here and the choice of uh, finishes and a couple of fans to get the airflow. You've got air conditioning ducting there. You've got a hatch above, you've got a porthole to outboard. So, um, and this is where I end up bunking most of the time on the boat, but uh, very comfortable bed. Okay. And you can see the additional uh, storage there, hanging locker storage. And then again, the dagger boards are built into this furniture. Uh, so it's completely out of sight again, and um, easy to navigate your way through the boat. Okay, so, um, that pretty much brings us to the conclusion of our tour today. So uh, what I'd like to remind people, unless you've got questions now that we can answer on the spot, uh, we do have this vessel open tomorrow at Brisbane, at the Royal Queensland Yacht Squadron. It's available by appointment to respect social distancing and uh, COVID rules that are present. Uh, and we still have a little bit of space, but it's, it's largely booked out otherwise. So uh, if you would like to take a look at the boat, it will be at the Royal Queensland Yacht Squadron tomorrow, and you'll need to get in touch to make sure we book an appointment for you. Um, but uh, thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, hopefully that's given you a little bit more insight into this wonderful design. Um, we hope to get out on the water one day and give you a really good demonstration sail of this boat in a video format, but um, we'll see what we can do uh, given the restrictions we have traveling around the country at the moment. Anyway, thanks for joining us everyone. And um, oh, we've got a couple more, um, a couple more questions here we'll answer. And in fact, I didn't answer some from earlier. So San Diego uh, said that, uh, is there a way of to heat or cool the cockpit when it's fully enclosed. So maybe we might just walk out in the cockpit there for us, Sal. Yeah, so the way that they've got it set up here is uh, there are clears outboard and then there's a shade cover that goes in the rest of the area that will do two things, prevent sun coming in from the, the aft of the boat if you've got the sun setting against you. Uh, and also you can set that up to provide some uh, insect screening if, if you do it really well. Uh, but typically this isn't an area that's uh, cooled or heated by an air conditioning setup. Though it's not to say it couldn't be done, um, but it is easy to get natural ventilation through here by uh, putting probably some, uh, which is opening up some of the, the clears at the top there. But um, 
it'd be probably a case if you're in a, in a really warm area or a really cold area, some additional ducting is probably uh, the way to go for heating or cooling. Uh, we've got a question here from, uh, from Facebook, from Manuel. Uh, so what's the production time? So production time is about uh, two years at the moment uh, for the next available production slot. Uh, I think we're talking about February 2022, I think. But I, <laughs> actually, it's February 23 from memory. So we're getting over a bit two and a half years but again talk to your local agent or talk to us about that um, because uh, there could be an option for an earlier slot in, uh, in the current environment but um, the, the uh, early ones seem to get snapped up pretty quickly but um, just get in touch if uh, if you want to have a closer look at uh, timing Otherwise, um, I think that's any other questions. I think we'll leave it there. So uh, again, you think, thanks everyone. Uh, really, if you haven't seen the uh, Ruby Rose videos, good to have a look at that from, from their perspective. Uh, we do have a sailing video. We took a very brief one out on Norton Bay that you can check out on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you'd like an information pack, please get in touch. We can send you out some pricing and detailed information on this boat. And of course, um, as I mentioned, the boat is uh, here with us for a short while in uh, Brisbane before it heads north, uh, cruising in the Sundays. So, um, so please get in touch if you'd like to take a look at the boat. Um, and we really, again, give our full thanks to, to John and Janita for uh, sharing their boat with us today. It's, uh, it's an absolute beauty and, and uh, it's a wonderful boat to sail. Uh, and I think anyone... Uh, that has the opportunity would appreciate it. So wonderful. All right. Thanks everyone. And uh, next Friday, we'll have another chat lined up. We've got a fantastic talk coming through for us uh, about circumnavigating Australia. So I'll be uh, talking to Craig Mogetz, who took his family on a year long sabbatical around Australia, I'm talking about how to do that, the big considerations, the the real highlights of the trip and uh, how to prepare for something like that. So please uh, jump on and join us next week and um, great to have you again with us. We'll see you then.